Now then guys, welcome back to Range 23, my name's Bob, we have got an unusual video for you today, just out testing a few bits, some of which are for this gun right here, this is a Smith & Wesson M&P 1522, some a lot of you will already be familiar with, quite a popular gun in the UK certainly amongst the practical shooting crowd, uh, it's got a lot of good things going for it, it's obviously an AR style, AR pattern rifle, so all your controls are very ergonomic, uh, very, very well located for you very familiar you've got uh, the, the ability to change out stocks and grips and various other parts to which suit your needs it's uh, fairly cheap as well for what it is about five six hundred quid i think these go for a lot cheaper on the second hand market and one of its biggest uh, kind of plus points is its weight it is super lightweight it's nearly almost all polymer construction so really good there but it does have some drawbacks uh, one of which um, is a pretty big one I think and it's one of the top reasons I don't really like this rifle uh, and we're going to demonstrate that for you today but before we get into that I'll just quickly take you over this rifle it's, it's pretty pretty bog standard for a, for a 1522 but it has had a few little changes made the most um, obvious one is the barrel so the barrel cut down from 16 to 12 inches uh, cut crowned and re-threaded uh, and then that is pretty much it actually it's got a mag load safety and an ambidextrous charging handle but apart from that it is pretty much a stock rifle we are topped off with a vortex strike eagle 128 lpvo that is going to come in handy for today's test and also the other thing that's uh, been done is this little um, handguard retaining clamp or whatever you call it uh, has also been removed so that has effectively free floated the barrel on this gun and so for today's test to demonstrate um, why I don't like this gun, what I think is the kind of biggest flaw with this gun, we're going to need to test it against another similar rifle. And for that, I've brought along uh, my AR-15, uh, which is just a, a nothing fancy, it's just an aero build with a um, CMMG 22 bolt in there. But in terms of the setup, it's fairly similar. We've got a 12-inch uh, barrel there, free-floated uh, handguard, or free-floated barrel with a free-floated handguard, shall I say. And we're also topped off with another Vortex 128 Strike Eagle. So very similar in terms of the setup of these two rifles for today's test. Oh, here comes Millspec Matty, look. Right on time, he can be the cameraman. Right guys, we are back at the 75 yard line. Uh, Mid-pack Matty is my cameraman. Now remember, all you say is I am the cameraman, all right? What's your job, Matty? Camera cool, right. We're going to shoot some groups with the uh, 22 off the world's best tripod mount. These are available on eBay. Right, let's go. Now realizing I've forgot my EPRO. Okay, and we're out. Wonderful, right. Let's uh, get some ear pro on and then uh, and shoot the other rifle. Right, now we're gonna shoot with the AR for a control group. Don't worry about the size of these groups, guys. A lot of wind, you know, it's cold. <laughs> A, like a like again a localized hurricane there got weird wind on this field it's not definitely not me scope's blurry right top right oh and that's a bad miss Alrighty, let's go them groups and then I'm going to show you the reason why I don't like this gun. The big, the fatal flaw with this gun. Let's go check it out. Right you guys, there's our two kind of uh, groups just shooting off the little rest here. Now we're going to alter it up, that's the right mag, we're going to alter it up, we're going to put the rifle on here and then we're going to hang a weight off the end of the rifle 
and that is the redneck science way of simulating being on a barricade or a fence or getting a, a grip on the gun or something like that up on the end of the handguard to see if it actually alters the point of impact so we're gonna put this there I think and then this is just a lovely Presidia Field Sports multi-purpose pouch that we're going to use. Big thanks to Presidia. Ooh, it's heavy. Put that on there. Right. Are we ready? Yeah, let's go. Picking up a bit, but it's picking up quite a lot actually. Definitely not the uh, best group in there, but whatever. Uh, right, that's our kind of control group. Now, we'll shoot with the Smith. Same bag, same weight and everything like that. Just hang that off the front there, look. And we'll see, it's on there, yeah. We'll see the difference. We're not shooting for, uh, for groups. We're shooting, we're looking at the point of impact, point of impact shift, okay. So 10 rounds from the Smith. We're out. Lovely, right. Let's go take them groups out, guys. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, guys. Matt, I'm going Matt here just doing some uh, fast maths. Not sure what he's doing here. I think he might be trying to draw a, draw a Union Jack. King and country and all that stuff. One particle of unitanium has a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor. Carry the two, changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. Oh, yeah, so this is your point of aim, bottom centre of the circle. Okay, your first group's landed a centimetre to the right and just slightly down, so you, if you take it to the point of aim, it's the bottom centre of that. So that's your control group. Add the weight, and it's then moved all the way down here. That's the mean point of impact, the centre of that group. Yep. If you like, and then we're now 10 centimetres low, and three off to the right. The three off to the right you could probably put down to wind. Yeah, probably put that down to maybe point. me, bad shooting. And then similarly with the mil spec 2-2, two, two, you've got a little bit of a shift right, but again, that's more wind than anything else. No yeah. Actual, we can see that straight away. So, yeah, back to the studio. Friends don't let friends buy plastic guns. <laughs> so guys, I thought I'd come back to the studio to round this one off for you. And I say studio like I'm not just sat in my garage, right? <laughs> but um, what does that very quick, very rudimentary uh, test tell us? Well, despite my frankly appalling groups, and yeah, listen, I know it was pretty bad, like, um, you know, it was, it was pretty windy out there, I was shooting off that janky rest, you know. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, you're not really fine, you just can't get into it no. because they would never understand. Well, like Matt was touching on in the video there, He's obviously sized the groups for us and, and determined the mean point of impact. Top two groups are shooting without the weight. We've got the 1522 here and the mil spec AR. Both the groups are pretty much an identical size and they're all the point of impact is pretty much the same as well, right at the bottom of the um, red circle. We've got about two and a half inch vertical spread and about a four inch horizontal spread. To be fair, that four inch uh, horizontal spread is probably due to a bit of wind. It was pretty choppy out there. Then we move down, we put the weight on the gun. 
And the reason I'm using a weight on the gun is to keep it consistent between both rifles, to keep the forces on that on that handguard the same. If I was just trying to hang off the rifle or whatever, you know, I, I could be putting a different amount of force on each each gun between each shot. So it's to keep it consistent, and we can see the mil spec rifle is almost no different whatsoever. We've still got about roughly two and a half inch um, vertical spread and about four inch horizontal spread. Point of impact is pretty much cock on with the other two groups. Uh, yeah, the other two groups. But moving across to the 1522, when we hang that weight on there, we see a dramatic change. First thing you notice is the group size is really low. We've dropped about four inches uh, from the main point of impact to the group. The horizontal strings opened up slightly. That again could just be the wind. I'm not too bothered about that. But the vertical stringing has doubled, basically, the vertical size of the group. It's gone to five inches. So uh, obviously we've, we've, we've opened up the group quite significantly, certainly on the vertical axis and the point of impact has shifted dramatically. That's our point of aim, that circle there, and we're all the way down here for the point of impact. So why do we see such a, a massive uh, difference with the Smith? You know, I said at the beginning of the, uh, the video, it's, uh, it's been free floated effectively as the barrel, the, the, the handguard off the gun. But unlike the mil spec gun, the Smith's using that polymer receiver. So everything's tied into that there. That's your kind of this area here, the front of your uh, upper is the most kind of critical parts, the kind of foundation of the gun, certainly in terms of accuracy. It's where your barrel bed, uh, barrel mates into, handguard fastens up, your um, barrel nut fastens everything down, uh, nice and tight, but unfortunately, there's just too much flex in that in that plastic receiver. You know, I, can, I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but I can certainly see the bend in that there. That's just using my hands off my knee there. Um, you know, dare say you could probably snap this in half if you tried hard enough. Uh, who wants to see that? <laughs> Thousand likes and we'll do it. Sorry, Chris, this is your gun, but, you know, give the people what they want. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, you know, polymer's uh, a great thing, but it's not suited to every application, clearly. You know, just counting up the number of polymer receivers, there are upper receivers there are out there on the market. It's not a very long list, I'll tell you. Uh, and don't think that, if you know, if you could just alleviate this issue by putting a more rigid handguard on there, putting an aluminium or whatever handguard on there, it's still, that force is still going to get transferred back to the receiver. That's the mating point for everything there. That's the uh, the foundation of the gun, like I say. That's where the issue lies. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not dunking on this gun either, guys. You know, I know a lot of people use this gun. It's a great gun, a competition winning gun. Um, but you just have to know its limitations. It's, I'm sure, you know, it's fine up until like, those close, medium ranges, but you start edging out a bit further, you know, 100 yards, maybe plus and you probably will start to see some deflection there. Um, certainly if you're shooting off barricades, off bipods, that type of thing. Maybe not to this degree, this was maybe a bit more of an extreme test, you know, hanging a, a fairly heavy weight off the, off the handguard there. But you'd be surprised how much, um, how much force you can put on the gun if you're in an awkward position, shooting off a barricade or something like that in a, in a, in a practical rifle match. You'd be surprised, you know, it might not be to this extreme, but certainly a few centimetres here and there, uh, it's going to make a difference, isn't it? And I think that's one of the big reasons we've seen a lot of top competition shooters move away from things like the Smith to more mil spec oriented builds, you know, um, aluminium receivers, those, those nice tighter tolerances, those more rigid um, materials, you know, just to get that consistency, every little bit of precision you can get counts, you know, you're shooting off a barricade, it might not be to this degree, absolutely, but uh, 100 yards, how bad would this have been, you know, we could have been another few inches down there, couldn't we? So yeah, it's just, uh, just something to be aware of really, guys. So there you go guys, I hope you've enjoyed that one, or at least found it interesting. If you have, go ahead and hit that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you run a Smith & Wesson 1522 and that's really hurt your feelings, make sure you get down in the comments section and have a good cry about it. Stay tuned as well guys, more great stuff coming up on the channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And as Millspec Matty said, friends don't let friends buy plastic guns. Yeah. Oh, a little flyer. Oh. Bit of wind that mate. Totally not me that. Definitely not me. <laughs>